I got the uh, here look, and uh, I just want to thank the senators uh, for their contributions this evening. Um, and uh, over the past couple of years, this state is surviving through a pandemic, an energy shock, rising inflation, and a war on our continent. Yet employment is higher than before the pandemic, and this government has delivered the highest social protection budget in uh, the history of uh, in the hundred year. Uh, old uh, history of our state. So I'm going to use this opportunity uh, to re respond to some of the issues raised by the Senators. Uh, Senator Crockwell and Senator Burke raised the issue of Class K PRSI and can I just say this is a sensitive issue which needs to have cross-party support. Uh, I, you know, I, I fully understand the ar arguments that you have made uh, and uh, I have said that an all-party approach needs to be taken to this issue, uh, on this issue. Uh, and I think the Joint Oireachtas Committee uh, for Social Protection Rural Community Development should examine the issue of Class K, consult with Oireachtas members, past and present, uh, and from all parties and none, uh, talk to people who lose their seats, hear their stories, and uh, you know, just look at this to see is there something, uh, or is this something that's putting people off from getting involved in politics? Uh, and can I just say that if I get a report uh, from the Joint Oireachtas Committee which shows that there is cross-party support for action on Class K, I'll certainly, I'm happy uh, to look at it and I'm happy to act upon it, uh, but I, can I just impress upon the fact that we do need cross-party support uh, on this uh, issue. Um, I know that uh, a number of senators, uh, Senator Kine, Senator Curry, and Senator Maria Byrne, all raised the issue of uh, the, the school meals. Uh, I have commissioned an evaluation uh, of the school meals scheme, uh, and there will be a report before the end of the year. Obviously, I'm conscious that the, the cost of food has certainly increased, uh, and uh, I do know that the rates haven't increased uh, for a good few years, but I can't say that uh, I can't say it for certain. But uh, I expect the evaluation uh, will uh, recommend an increase in the rates, uh, and I can tell you if it does, I'll act on that also. Uh, and I'm absolutely committed to expanding the school meals. Uh, there were only 30 schools getting hot school meals on a pilot scheme when I came into the department, and that's just over two years now. Uh, and there's now over 500 schools benefiting from that scheme. And can I just say that I think that, uh, 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 that a dinner, uh, especially, particularly the hot school meals programme, a hot dinner in the middle of the day for children who are going to school, it's the best thing you could give them. There's no doubt about that because it helps their educational attainment uh, and it ensures that children get a proper, uh, a proper dinner. And uh, I know as a mother, uh, when I used to be filling the lunch boxes, uh, uh, and if you missed a day or two before you got into that bag, you'd probably find a good few <laughs> mouldy, blue moulded sandwiches at the bottom of it, despite your best efforts <laughs> to make them as attractive as possible. <laughs> so I'd love, and, I, and I'd love to expand it across the board regardless of the socio-economic background, just give the child a dinner and a good hot dinner in the middle of the day and it'll help working parents and instead of that torture of having to go every night and trying to put a lunch together. <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's something, uh, just to say, I am totally committed to it. Um, just to say also in terms of, of um, uh, the, the CSO figures on this budget shows uh, that against the 2010 baseline, the number of children in consistent poverty actually has fallen from by, by 45,000. Uh, that was from 107,000 in 2011 to 62,000 in 2021. And consistent poverty rate has fallen by 4.1 percentage points from 9.3% in 2011 to 5.2% in 2021. And while income supports are important, access to affordable and available services, including housing, health, childcare, education, etc., plays an equally strong and potentially more sustainable role in addressing child poverty. Social protection budgets over the past number of years have prioritised the introduction of measures uh, that have had and will continue to have a direct and positive impact on poverty and in particular uh, uh, on child poverty. So we had increases in the weekly child related payments, increase in the work and family payment thresholds and that's aimed at supporting work and families and ensuring that work pays, improvements to the means testing of payments for lone parents 
increases to the back to school clothing and footwear allowance and increases in the weekly rates of payment for all schemes. Introduction of the, and the expansion of the hot school meals, uh, as I discussed, and a double child benefit payment as part of the cost of living measures in budget 2023 and then of course a range of lump sum payments. And of course, like in any budget, we can never do everything we want to do, uh, but, and there's always going to be more asks, and there's always going to be more things that we would like to do. But I think, in fairness, in this budget, we have struck a, a, a fair balance, and all of the analysis showed that this is a positive budget, particularly for the most vulnerable. The ESRI has said that the weekly welfare uh, increases, together with the one-off measures, will mean that low-income Households will be better off next year than they would if we had just increased welfare rates in line with inflation. I also note another report from the Irish Fiscal Advisory Council, which notes the government has got the balance right between protecting vulnerable households and avoiding adding to inflation. So, uh, you know, we've, been, we've tried to do uh, to, to, to cover off uh, as many things as we can. Just uh, Senator Wall, uh, I, I, like many deputies across the House, uh, you know, recognise the important service of the community welfare officers and just to say that there is a full-time community welfare office, officer present in all 50 intro centres nationwide from 9am to 5pm Monday to Friday. In addition, community welfare officers remain available to 10 clinics. They can talk to people over the phone and where needed they can also arrange to visit a person's house by appointment. So we're genuinely doing everything we can to facilitate and help people. A client doesn't, however, have to attend uh, an office in person to make a claim or to make an inquiry about a claim. It is more convenient for them. Uh, we, they can uh, call the Community Welfare Service free phone line. And uh, I think there has been a, a huge increase, actually, in the number of people that are now using the phone line and a lot of cases being able to, to sort them out and help them out just through a, a, a phone call. Uh, or a number of phone calls. So uh, can I just say also the delivery of a locally based community welfare service remains and will continue to remain a key aspect of the service and this uh, won't change. Uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, it was also raised about the, the carers allowance and it's part of the system of social assistance supports which provide payments based on an income need. The means test uh, uh, playing uh, the critical role in determining whether or not an income need arises as a consequence of a particular contingency, be that illness, disability, unemployment or caring. The means test for carers allowance is one of the most generous in the social protection system. However, uh, I have said that I am going to look at the means test across all schemes because uh, I was glad to increase uh, the, the, or, or, and, and also the, the, the means test in terms of, of, of savings, because at the minute for some payments, if you have more than 20,000 in savings, uh, it'll affect it as part of the means test. And I think, to be honest with you now, 20,000 is not uh, a, a, as big an amount as it was um, maybe uh, even six or seven years ago. Uh, or, so uh, I have increased that. Uh, on, the, on the, the fuel allowance, uh, the new fuel allowance for the over 70s, I've increased that means test from 20,000 up to 50,000. But I am going to look at all the means tests uh, uh, across the board. Uh, so uh, I think uh, I've covered most of the issues that were raised with me there. I just want to thank uh, the deputies uh, for, uh, for their remarks and uh, I look forward to progressing this bill through the House. Gormila Mahagav. Gormila Mahagav, Minister.